Hey, what's up everybody? This is Chris with Digital Rim. And in this video, we're gonna show you how to create a real world project of scale in Blender right now. So with that being said, we're just gonna hop right into it. Let's go. All right, so what we're doing here today is we have a clock that we've been building out. Um, we've been building out a 3D clock. And these are the, this is the hands that I bought uh, online of the 3D clock. So these will be the hands that you put the battery in and of course it'll tell time or whatnot. Boom. But one thing that I don't like about these hands, as you probably can probably already know, is this box, the, the, the housing of the hands. It's not very, it doesn't look good design wise, especially let's grab one of the, one of the, the numbers, you know, this number in in this hand just doesn't that square hand with let's try it this way that square hand just that or square housing just doesn't match it's square like that right it just doesn't match so i want to try to create a shape that goes more along the lines of this i want to create a shape that goes more along the lines of the um the actual characters of the actual of the actual numbers so with that being said what we're going to do is take the measurements of this, this um, the housing of this. So these square, this uh, square measurements. We're gonna take these measurements. We're gonna open Blender, and in Blender, we're gonna create a shape that would fit these measurements, and then create a housing that goes around it. So essentially, maybe create a circle or a a, a, a disc that has a cutout that's the same size of this box. So we'll essentially be able to put overlay to overlay it like this, where now where my hand is will be whatever shape we decide to make, but essentially it will not show the box anymore. And then we can hang it up anywhere. So with that being said, hopefully that made sense. Um, the first thing we wanna do is either grab a measuring tape or grab a ruler, right? And we're gonna take, we're gonna see how, how the dimensions of this thing we're gonna go with you could go with you could go with uh, millimeters if you're metric or you could go with inches if you're in America we're gonna go with inches and it looks like let me take some take some quick find something to take notes on boom so it looks like we have we have a square. All right, so it looks like the height is two inches, right? The width say two inches. Two inches. I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add probably I'm gonna add probably like a an eighth. So like two and an eighth probably. I'm gonna add to each each one. And then the and then the depth is about half half an inch half an inch so essentially this is what we came up with right i don't know if you can even see that i'll actually share it in in a second so that's how we're going to do that so with that being said we're just going to hop right into full screen mode i mean get right back into the into this mode so essentially what we have here again we have a box um i'm gonna go on, let me pull up paint mode real quick so you can see what we have so i can show you boom all right
one second. All right, boom. All right, so essentially, we have going on here, right? We have All right, boom, that's perfect. We have a bot or a a box like this, right? We have two Let's say 2.2 .2 inches, 2.2 .2 inches, and then I'm adding 0 0.2 inches to everything. So, and then the width here is 0 0.7 inches, right? That's what that's what we've determined, right? So we want to create essentially create this shape in blender we know what it is in real world now we know what the size looks like or the size dimensions are in real world so let's take this to blender so we want to add our add our add make sure the origin point is set to the center the snap cursor to world origin boom perfect we want to go ahead and create an object mesh. Let's just do a, a cube this time. Cube, right? Go ahead and pull that cube up. One of the things you want to, one of the things that I like to do is make sure it's flush to the ground. So how you do that is go ahead and uh, tab, go into edit mode. You can go into edit mode right there, but go into edit mode, grab that bottom face, select that bottom face. I mean, select that bottom face, right click. Okay, it's not right click, so you want to go to mesh, snap, cursor to select, or yeah, cursor to select it. Boom. After you get cursor to select it, now you want to go back into object mode and get this center point to be at the cursor because the cursor is selected to that bottom face. So that's exactly what we want to do. So we want to right click on there on the object and then put uh, set origin to 3D cursor. Now, is set the 3D cursor. So if we scale, it'll scale from that point. Perfect. So now what we want to do is go to put that back on the floor. So we're going to take our 3D cursor, set origin, origin, not origin, snap to, snap cursor to world origin. Boom. Now we want to essentially take this set origin and snap that to the, snap that to the bottom. So snap, selection to cursor boom so now it's slapped to the floor i know that's a real roundabout way of doing this these things but again it helps it helps when you get to the part where you're scaling and things like that it makes it super easy where everything is based off of how how far from the floor it is so now we're going to go into the actual development of the box shape so we had two inches by two inches by 0.5 inches, and we're gonna add 0.2 inches to everything. So uh, make sure, again, make sure you go into units, set your units to imperial, if you are imperial or if you're metric, metric, but set your units to whatever you're comfortable with, but make sure it's in inches or millimeters. Once it's in inches or millimeters, you'll see this changes. So now you want to take your, your dimensions and make it the dimensions that we measured out, which was two inches by two inches by 0.5 inches. And this is essentially the size of size of the measurements we took that represents the housing for the dials. So that's perfect. One of the things that we didn't measure uh, just a second ago, one of the things that we did measure was the actual uh, the the part that comes out of the middle of the dials. So what we're going to do is do that part as well. 
we measured it. I want to say it's at it's at five. Let's measure real quick again. But I want to say it's at it's at. Like, I want to say, I want to say half a, half an inch is comfortable. Half an inch is comfortable. So we'll do half the inch for this diameter of the circle in the middle. So what we do is add a new object, mesh, a cylinder, Scale that cylinder down. Doesn't have to be perfect right now, but scale that cylinder down. And we want to make that um, dimensions almost a half an inch. So you could push S. And if you hold down Shift while dragging, you can see that you can drag a lot slower. So we want to just get that as close to half an inch as possible. Boom, that's what that's good enough. Or you could just enter it. 0.5. Boom. Perfect. And we want to do the same, pretty much the same exact thing we did before, because I want to be able to scale it from the bottom. So again, we're going to run through this again. Go into edit mode. Select the face at the bottom. All right. Mesh. We want to make our cursor go to that. So snap to, I mean mesh, snap to, selection, cursor to select. That's going to put that cursor there. So now we want to set the origin to where the cursor is. So go into object mode, right click, set origin, 3D cursor. You can also do that in object mode here. Set origin. Where is it? Set origin, 3D cursor, boom. You can do it like that. So now when you scale up, you can scale from here, scale from the bottom. We want to go ahead and put our snap our snap the cursor back to the world origin. So snap to cursor to world origin. But we don't necessarily have to do it for this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Oh, so actually, I'm not going to do it because I want to see exactly. So I want to snap this. Or just bring it. We can use our eye level. And when we see it intersects, that's good enough. Boom. That's good enough. So how tall, how tall do we want this to be? We want to say another probably. I uh, keep doing millimeters. Millimeters is actually probably more, a lot more accurate. We want to say actually we want this to be. About another, about another half an inch. Let's say half an inch. Yeah, about another half an inch. So a half an inch and a half an inch. So we want to go ahead and make that 0.5 here too. So now essentially we want to have a, we'll have a rough shape of what uh, this thing, this thing should be cut out. So everything that we made in this 3D, 3D program here. Is going to be this the dimensions or somewhat of the dimensions of this so we can use it as a cutout so we can place our shape on top of that however we want to design our shape right put that there for a second all right so let's do a auto shade smooth real quick and we're just going to go ahead and join these two together Like so, and you can do you can join two objects together by hitting Control J or Object Join somewhere right here. Join, boom, right there. All right, so we join those together, and let's say let's say I'm gonna just give you this just for a tidbit. Let's say you join them together. You're like, man, I need to change something. You know, I thought. I thought I was ready to join and I'm not ready to join them. If you want to separate them back again, you go ahead and select it. 
select the object, go into edit mode. I don't even know if you have to do edit mode. You can probably just go into object mode and separate by uh, split, where split. Apply, transform, set origin. I'm not seeing it. It's probably in edit mode. So go into edit mode, select everything, select all. Mesh, split, split, or separate. Separate by loose parts. And that's essentially what you want to do, separate by loose parts. And it'll separate all of the loose parts because again, we didn't we didn't necessarily model these to go together, but we just joined them. So we're joining them again. So now they're connected like that, boom, perfect. Now we want to get into now we want to get into actually modeling the uh, shape of the shape of whatever it is. You can model, you can create whatever you want, but we're going to use this as the cutout for that. So essentially, we're going to do an add mesh. Uh, let's do a let's do a cylinder for now. Go ahead, scale that cylinder down. And again, we're going to do the same exact thing as we did before. Well, essentially, because it is a cylinder, we can probably just Duplicate, let's just do it again. So you just have pra practice this, right? So make sure you go to edit mode, select the face you want. I wanted to see if I if they have the uh, yeah. All right, select the face you want. Select the face you want. Mesh. Snap cursor to select it. Mesh. Snap cursor to select it. Boom. Go into object mode. Set origin object, set origin to 3D cursor, boom. Object mode, set origin, or snap cursor to world origin, boom. This time we want to snap it to the, snap the this object to the cursor now. So, oops. Object, snap to cursor. Or you could do world origin, origin. Selection to cursor, boom. Now be perfect. Auto, add an auto smooth to it. Now we just wanna scale this down, boom. Again, we're building from the, from the ground, if you wanna call it quote unquote ground, but building from the ground so it'll be flush with the wall, whatever the case may be, you want it to be flush. So that's why we're building it just like this. So we want this, we want this to be the same width as our characters. So let's see how wide our characters. I wanna say it's about one inch, one inch tall. So yeah, one inch. So we're gonna make this one inch on the Z axis. And that'll look like that. And we're gonna do four inches for the height and the width. Because four inches is about the, uh, the width of this, even though this is kind of shape funky, but it's about the width of one of these characters. So we're gonna do four inches. Boom, all right. So one thing that I am noticing as well is Let's remove the cylinder right here. We need to pull this, pull this face here up so we can use it to cut out from the other face. So boom, it will be just like this. So you see, you can kind of see one face is in there inside of the other, other part. It's inside. We're essentially gonna use that to cut out what we wanna cut out. So grab the part that you wanna cut out Grab the part that you want to cut out 
and go into modifiers so you can get the modifiers by this like little wrench thing modifier properties go into um dr the drop down and select uh boolean once you select boolean you can hit this eyedropper here or just select the objects at the scene but hit the eyedropper and either select select it here by just selecting it like that or select it here now make sure you name your stuff so boolean i'm gonna just call it boolean and then shape i'm gonna call it cutout all right so then now that we we've set the boolean on this object because we want this object to be affected now that we've set that we can go ahead and take the cutout shape away by turning off the visibility here and you can see or hit h and you can see that now we have that cutout that should fit our our um our mesh now you can see that it should have a hole right here but there's no hole why that might be so let's turn on the visibility but turn the visibility back on turn the shape of this one off but why that might be is maybe because this isn't going going through the mesh underneath it so let's go on a wireframe mode it's probably right on the surface but it's not going through the surface so we're going to go through the surface boom we're doing that to try to get a feel for the size but we don't have to worry about that now so we're going to now turn the visib visibility back on and it should and turn off x-ray mode and it should okay so it's adding that part it's adding where it's overlapping but subtracting where it's not overlapping so if that is the case if this is what you're dealing with like man it's not working why this is not working is because we join those two shapes when they they're actually not they're just two separate objects so again get, get, uh, blender can be finicky like this but again if you know the tool getting for more familiar with the tool you can always work around it so kind of like i showed before we're going to go ahead and separate these objects back out instead of joining them we're going to separate them so let's separate edit mode select all by holding a select all mesh separate by loose parts boom so what we'll have to do is just add two booleans to one so we're gonna have the dial dial cutout and box cutout boom and then the shape so let's put the shape back in now we're going to select the shape go to modifier and instead of having one boolean boolean here with the box cut out only we're going to do two booleans so another boolean with the dial now turn the visibility of those cutouts off and now you have your actual hole like so all right all right all right now we're going to take this just a step further than this right because it looks good but when you 3d print this it's going to be all like you can see that there's not enough definition in this circle in this circle to make it look very smooth so what we're going to do is add a add a subdivision subdivision surface and make sure it's above the booleans hmm simple well I know why okay so you you probably noticed like let me put that back on 
you probably be like, why is it? Why does it look like that though? Right? For one, we're gonna move this subdivision surface above the boolean because we want it to cut out after we make it smooth. We want it to do the cutouts afterwards. But you might be like, why does it look like this? And mainly because we don't have enough geometry uh, on the edges. So it's smoothing out those edges and we don't want that. So what we wanna do is go ahead and turn off the visibility real quick. And we're gonna add some more, some more uh, geometry. So we're gonna select this space here. We can select the bottom one at the same time actually. Select both of these spaces. Select this one, select that one. We're gonna inset them by hitting I. You hit I, you can inset the face. And we'll just inset it to give it a nice little lip right there. Like, and you can hit, you can get inset, and I like to show this as well. You can hit inset by going right here as well. So we're gonna inset it again. I, and I hit, the, hit it right here, or you can hit I. You see this yellow thing pops up, and you just drag anywhere on the yellow. And you can, it allows you to click and drag. Now it's a little finicky because I want it to get small. But it's acting like it doesn't want to get small. If that is the case as well, you can also do extrude by hitting E and then hit S to scale. And that'll allow you to scale. Okay. There we go. Scale your extrusion. Now, if you're having trouble like this, where it's extruding and going inwards, you can hit Shift Z, and it will not scale it on the Z axis, which is up and down. Boom. All right. That's those are just little tips. I know that's I wouldn't call it advanced, but that's a little a little next level. Next level. So let's see what the subdivision looks like now that we've done that. Go into object mode, and you see. It's gotten better. It looks more like a hockey puck at this at right at this current state. But one of the things we also can do is like, for example, go into the bottom part, go into edge select mode, double click on the edge, and it's going to select the entire edge here. And then if you go to this, this menu on the right side and go to mean bevel edge and turn that all the way up. Now, if you're like, where's that menu on the right side? Why can I find it? If you hit in, it'll come up. Or if you go over here and just like, you can see this little, little arrow. If you hit that little arrow, it'll pop up. You wanna go to item, drop down properties, mean crease. You wanna turn that all the way up. What that does is says this edge is a crease. We don't wanna smooth that edge. We wanna smooth everything else but that edge. So that's how you would do that part. We could dissolve this edge real quick. Dissolve edge and see what it looks like after we dissolve that. Now I don't necessarily like that personally, but after we dissolve that, we can do same thing. Double click to select the whole ring of a uh, loop. The loop to so select the whole loop, and you can either right click or go up here to mesh. or edge, bevel. Bevel edges. And just move it around until it starts to move. I sometimes again, like the other one is a little finicky, but there we go. Till it starts to move and you get a nice little bevel on your edge. Now if you want more if you want more edge loops just uh Roll a metal mouse button, and you can see it'll add more edge loops to it. And boom, I'm liking how that looks, personally. I think that looks good. Now there is also a non-destructive way to do it if you don't want to do the edge bevel that way, you can also do it as a modifier. So go to modifier, 
bevel and now it'll bevel all of the edges of your actual mesh but you can also let's pull it up to the top but you can also define it so mean bevel width you can define like how strong that bevel is so we're going to do let's say four segments right we're going to do about weight so we're going to grab this grab this edge and we're going to do bevel weight and we're going to just bevel it like that and we turned it all the way up so it'll be fully affected by whatever we, whatever value we put in here it'll have full effect like so I kind of like, I don't, I feel like it stretched it out with that extrusion instead of the in, inset doesn't stretch it out like that. Extrusion stretches it out. But again, we can now just manipulate this a little bit, make it a little better. also add an edge loop to the bottom I'm just now I'm fine-tuning we pretty much got near with the lesson but right now I'm just fine-tuning right Boom, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. And I'm not sure why this is giving a hard edge, but if it's giving a hard, let's uh, mesh smooth. Definitely not what I'm looking for. Auto smooth. I kind of like it, but I don't at the same time. That's interesting. I never do it did that. Now I'm just I'm just refining everything. So bear with me at this point right here.
just refining it, make it, trying to make it look a little, make it blot a little better. So I'm not, I'm not 100% sure why it's giving me this hard edge here. I'm trying to figure it out in a way, but. That's better. I think I like that right there. Like keep it simple. We don't want a super bevel, but we, at the same time, we want to keep it simple. All right, boom. That's good. That's good. That's good. I like it. I like it. One thing that I am also noticing is this dial cut out. Maybe it needs some more definition or something. Cause I really wish it was a lot smoother right in here. I think that's good. I think that'll be good, right? All right, so essentially we have our shape. We have the cutout with the actual dial area where it's can go through. So we will just take we will just take this casing, take these hand, take these the hands off of the clock, but take this casing and put it over the top, then put the hands back on and it'll look circular. So with that being said, let's prep this for printing, let me go ahead and save this file before I even get to that point. Um, clock, this is the clock. It's like so. Now, how we how do we prep this for printing? Because if we try to export this out right now, it's going to have all of the booleans applied to it as well. What we want to do. What we want to do is, is just go ahead and apply all of our modifiers. I usually personally like to keep a working file just in case we have to go back in or update it again. So I'm going to save this all to a collection. So, uh, Make collection, move to collection, new collection, build. Okay. Boom. Duplicate collection. I'm gonna turn the build one off. And I'm gonna call this one export. So now we just want to apply all to this and we can get rid of the shapes that make it, that, um, 
to help make it. Go ahead and make this selection. File export out, right? The STL file. Boom. And that's how you that's how you save it as a that's how you save it and get it ready for 3D printing. So that is that. We will uh take this in a 3D printing. Uh let's go ahead and prep it. Let's let's go ahead and prep it. We'll prep it on this on this string too. So now you wanna open your 3D printing application. If you need if you need a run through of you know the settings for your 3D print application, we have a video on that in the Creator Academy. So make sure you tune into that so you can see the settings that we suggest when first starting with your uh, 3D printing journey. Um, but what we're gonna do is drop that STL file into we're going to drop this STL file into the actual program so this is Ultimate Akira and you can simply just drag and drop straight from your uh, file so we're going to drag, drop, boom. And as you see, like I said before, if you just have it where the visibility of it's off, then all of the stuff that was in the scene that is just hidden is going to still be there. So we want to delete all of that stuff. Looks like we can't delete it. So I'm going to have to go back in the, go back in here. Darn it. We have to delete all of the hidden objects of our scene. And you can do an export selection, which I probably should have did. So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. So let's say you have this object, did you just wanna export that object? File, export, STL, selection only, right there. And that should get your selection. Boom, so now let's try it. Whoa, okay, there we go. I was just too too close. I was like, whoa, what happened? We we're just way too close. So essentially, this is what it's gonna look like on the bed of your 3D printer. Boom. That looks pretty accurate to looking at my 3D printer. That looks pretty accurate to the size that we we're looking for. We're gonna go ahead and print this out. We already have again. If you if you need a refresher on how to how to set up your settings and things like that, make sure you go to our uh, a course on Ag in Creator Academy. Um, join a Creator Academy if you're not already part of the Creator Academy, but get our course. But if you are just lazy and don't want to do that. Just hit super quality. Um, I wouldn't suggest dynamic or standard. Just hit super quality to make sure it's to the best quality without having to go fully into settings. But we're gonna do our digital rem settings here. And we're gonna hit slice. Seven hours. We got seven hours to wait for this to create itself. So essentially, you're gonna save this to a disk Usually it's a USB drive or something like that where you can put it into your to your 3D printer or you if you have the ability to um, have the ability to send it via you know cloud or whatever the case may be. But more than likely, if you are just starting a 3D printing process, you you don't have any of the that network ability to 
tap into your network to send the files to your 3D printer. So that being said, make sure you just have a USB drive or something to plug in, take it to your 3D printer, and start the start the actual process, right? And you can get a preview of this right here. So this is essentially what you can expect your design to look like, more or less. More or less, you can expect your design to look somewhat like this. Now, again, as you as you as it builds itself, you can see these are kind of the steps it's going to take. Now, now that I'm noticing, it looks like it's including this isn't what I want. And I'm glad I'm checking now because it looks like it's including some those those uh is it or is that just a that's just the uh a support it's probably just a support but how am I gonna poke that out? I'm trying to think of how I'm gonna poke that out. I guess it could stay here because at the end of the day, really, all I need is to, well, no, I need I need that part to be not there because the thing needs to fit in there. Yeah, we're gonna have to figure out why that is. There something? Hold on, we're gonna have to check in. There's something in the there must be something in the Blender file. Like why is it? Well, I just have to get rid of everything in this thing. Like for real, for real. Or let's try this export OBJ. OBJ is just another form you can export it as. I just do the build export OBJ. And see what that does. Let's see what that does. See if it does it better. Because I don't like all this extra that this one's doing. So we can go back to prepare here. I'm glad. And again, that's why you want to kind of check that. I think it's something with the I think it's something with the actual print settings, actually. Cause it's not showing right here. It's actually showing how it's supposed to show. So I think it's something with the print settings. So let's go into our print settings and figure it out. Uh, walls, because we did download a new version of Cura here, and it might be adding something that I didn't add in the previous version. Support, generate support. We don't want to generate. I'll put my supports where I want them. Uh, I don't think we need this for this part. Let's slice and see what this does. I think it was just adding these generating supports for me and I didn't add that. And I don't want that. Preview. That's exactly what's going on. Okay, so it's generating the supports for me. Now we do need we with that being said we do need actually we don't we could just flip it on its head we could flip it on the other end on the we can flip it and just let it build from the bottom so basically rotating this thing that's exactly what we're gonna do but I'm scared it's gonna mess up our edges here. I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of nervous about that. We're gonna flip it. It's worth it. Let's flip it. Let's flip it. It's flipping. We're flipping it. It's done. We're flipping it. I'm gonna flip it around.
Boom. The thing is, the only thing I'm worried about flipping it like this is this, the edge here. We did that beveled ear, and I don't know how that's gonna turn out. So we'll add those, we'll add though that plate ad adhesion back. More than likely we're gonna have, I already know we're probably gonna have to sand that out. Probably gonna have to sand that off if we, if, yeah. Cause I honestly prefer it be perfect Cause that's the part you're gonna see. This part you won't see, but let's just print this out like this. I'm gonna add though. I'm gonna add those uh, plates though. I'm gonna do a brim. Yeah, I'm going to just do that. No, we're not going to do anything. Nothing. Slice it up. Slice it up. Let's see what it looks like now. Preview. We got five, five hours to print this. I like that. That's that's what we're looking for. Everything goes through the circuit. Perfect. Okay. Boom. Only part I'm concerned about is just this little... The little edge part there, but we're gonna see how it does. I think it'll get us at least in the ballpark where we need to be. So we're gonna save this to the disc and it'll be ready to go. Actually, I could just save it right now. My G code. Like a so clock G code. Like so, boom, all right. I think that's the, that, I, I know that's ready to go. Hopefully we get good results after five and a half or six hours. So boom, there it is. You got to see how we create a real world object using Blender. So in our, in our case, we we're actually creating a cover for the actual uh, middle part or the, the dial casing of the clock so it'll just look a little better all together as a as a clock so with that being said you can do the same exact thing for anything in the world if you can measure it realistically measure it and come up with the measurements you could take it right into blender change change the uh, measuring tools in blender to fit that actual measurement because you can go from inches to feet to millimeters to miles whatever the case may be but you can make your measurement tools accurate to what you're trying to create but then after you create it, you can go ahead and either 3D print it, send it to a send it to a, a shop to for them to create the product for whatever you're trying to do, and pretty much get you rolling like that. So one of the things you could probably think of as far as with production stuff, you can create your own hot shoots for your camera or certain things that you're like, man, I really wish I had this thing. I can't find it anywhere. I really wish I had this thing that I can add to my camera rig or add to my lighting or add you know, I just need this one piece and they don't create this essentially you can create it yourself in blender with a 3d plan with a 3d printer and a plan so that being said all y'all have a blessed day do that one thing that takes you closer to go that takes you closer to your goals do that one thing the one thing I always say is go to digitalrim.com and make sure you get access to the Creator Academy. But if you're not necessarily knowing what's going on in Creator Academy just of yet, make sure you get on the wait list to be part of the webinar that's coming up uh, that 
brings you to awareness of what the Creator Academy offers, but then also gives you gems on what to how to start your brand and what to do. The first steps I highly, highly urge you to do when starting your brand. So very, very important. But also, if you want to rewatch this live, if you want to be able to watch uh, tutorials that we release a week early, become a Patreon and uh, become one of our Patreons. You'll get, get access to lot, the live recordings for a week. We leave them up for a week and you get access to tutorials a week before we drop them uh, onto the social media. So you get access to those, those tutorials. Now also, you you will not get access to the create the full creator academy but you will get access to the tutorials that we do drop on youtube for everybody for everybody to get engaged with our community and understand what we do as a community and again give back things that we learned along the way We're like hey people in the world can use this let's just share this on youtube or share it somewhere else those videos you're going to get first access to us a whole week before we even drop them so I'll be honest with you, sometimes it's even before we, but as soon as we create the recording, just like we're doing this one, as soon as we recreate the recording and export it, we're pretty much putting it on Patreon right after that. So it's kind of like you're getting access as soon as we create it, it's being dropped into Patreon. So just like you saw this lesson, after we edit it, it'll be available for you in tutorial format for you to just follow along and do the same exact thing. So. With that being said, hopefully that inspires you to do that one thing that takes you closer to your goals. All y'all have a blessed day. Later, y'all. Peace.